How's it going, everyone? My name's Luxley, and I have a story to tell. Actually, we all have stories to tell, but recently a few people said, Luxley, please tell us a story. So I figured, I'm a part-time writer. I've written several unpublished novels, of which one was stolen, and I've written dozens and dozens of short stories, of which several I got actually published in some pretty decent periodicals and publications and magazines. So I figured, okay, guys, here's a story. This is a story about the time I got set up on a blind date. It's pretty, pretty funny. I hope you like it. Now, this goes back several years ago, and at the time, I was having a really bad slump with the ladies. I was having difficulty meeting women. I was in a male-dominated industry working in sales. I was doing my writing thing on the side, and even I was at the time, I was playing poker, and I was doing pretty well. I'd consider myself a semi-pro poker player. I was playing two, three nights a week, underground clubs, high-stakes high, high stakes games with friends, et cetera, et cetera, and I was making an extra 1500 to $2,000 a month playing cards, so I was pretty busy, and that was a big reason for my slump with the ladies. So logic says, hey, I'm not doing well with the ladies. That means go to Atlantic City and play poker. So that's what I did. I hooked up with a few friends. Let's go to AC. And I had about a 10-hour poker session, and I made, I think it was around $2,400. It did pretty well. But it was a 10-hour session, so I stayed in AC, didn't really sleep well, came home, was exhausted. And then I said, hey, I, got, I have some extra money. Let me hook up with a few internet dating sites. And I figured I'd tackle them, you know, hit one for a couple of months and then another and then another and see what worked for me. So I, the first one I hit up was matchmaker.com, which I think is no longer around. I, I should Google it, but I don't think it is. And I kind of sort of became a pro at this pretty quick. I, <laughs> I hit up about 30 profiles because I know women get inundated with responses from men because men are the aggressors and, and plus... You'll, you'll find a lot of older men going after younger women, which just kind of increases the numbers. You don't see a lot of older women going after younger men. So women, if, you're, if they're attractive and they have a pretty nice portfolio up there and they're young, they're going to get a lot of responses. They're going to get 20, 30 times the amount of responses that men do. And I kind of knew this going in. But I figured I'd give it a shot anyways. And I sort of became a pro because if she had a profile where she said, I love cats, I'd say, hey, Teresa, I got to take a picture with Monty, your cat. And I'd take a picture with Monty, and I'd send that picture. Or they say, I love kids. And I'd be like, Gabrielle, Michelle, come over here. We got to take a picture. You know, my two nieces. And we'd smile for the camera, and I'd send a picture with the two nieces. So she'd be like, I love to read. And I'd go to the library and have like a stack of books behind me and take a selfie. Or she'd say, I absolutely love dogs. And, and I'd say, hey, Matt, I got to get a picture with your dog. Come over here. And, and so whatever it was, I had it in the background. Whatever she was into, it was in the background of the picture. And I tried to make it look subtle. So I was kind of a bit of a pro. Such a pro that nobody responded to the 30 responses that I threw out there. Absolutely nobody. So almost two weeks went by. Am I really this bad at this? Nobody responded. So one Saturday morning, I'm playing racquetball with my buddy Lake. And he's kicking my ass. I mean, just absolutely destroying me. I lost about five out of six games to a guy who was a part-time alcoholic and needed a sp smoke break between each game, and I still lost. But it was a great workout, and I, I, I go home, I take a shower, and I'm a little disoriented. I still think I'm playing racquetball. I'm tired. I'm like, the phone rings. I'm like, who's calling? And I go over, and there's caller, the caller ID blocked. It doesn't say who it is. So I kind of, I'm like curious, who is this? Yeah, I pick up the phone. I was like, hello? Hi, Luxley? Yeah, this is Luxley. Hi, my name is Andy. How you doing? You responded to my ad on matchmaker.com. Do you remember me? Oh, yeah, of course I remember you. I have no idea who she is. I responded to 30 ads. But I'm a very, very audible person, and I was digging her voice. So that's a big, big plus right there. So she says, I just have one kind of long question for you, if you don't mind. You don't mind me being forward, do you? I said, no, 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 absolutely not. Well, hypothetically, 
Let's say we go out on a date, have a few drinks, and then we go out to dinner, and we hit it off, and a few weeks go by, and we hit it off, and there's magic, and there's sparks, and we're connecting like pieces of a jigsaw, putting 10 of them together, one, one, one after the other, over and over and over again, forming a beautiful picture of happiness and love. And let's say a few a year or two goes by, and we decide we want to get married and have kids. I just have one question for you. I'm like, okay. Hypothetically, if we did fall in love and get married, would you be okay raising our children in the Jewish faith and perhaps converting to Judaism? So I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm like, you know, and I didn't expect this question, you know, just like, like you swear to tell the truth, but nothing but the truth, the whole truth will help you. I, I did not expect this. So I'm thinking, well, I never really thought about it. I don't know. Uh, uh, she's like, can you hold on for a minute? I'm like, sure. Like five minutes went by until I realized she just hung up the fucking phone on me. She just fucking hung up the phone on me. I mean, I didn't say yes. I didn't say no. I, I just was kind of gear in the headlights about the question. I just was actually giving it some thought to give an honest answer, and she just hung up. Just hung up. Can you please hold on? Yeah. You know, please continue to hold. <laughs> Your call is valuable to us. What You may hear the sound of someone hanging up, but it's just a mirage or an illusion. So, pay you know, so whatever. So, a few months go by, and my buddy Ed, I used to meet him for lunch about once a week, once every other week, and he had this assistant who was this middle-aged woman, really sweet woman, and I used to spend a lot of time on the phone with her because a lot of times I'd call Ed and he was on the phone, so I'd talk to her for five minutes or ten minutes or whatever, and oh, over the years... Uh, she had set me up on several blind dates, and I just kind of realized all I had to do was show up at his office, talk on the phone, and say, I can't find a nice girl. I can't find a nice girl. Or no, 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 no these women want to be with a nice guy. They, they And whatever, she'd feel bad for me and hook me up on a blind date, and they all went pretty well. I mean, we, it just was like no major connection. So anyway, she says to me, Luxley, would you want to go on a blind date with a friend of mine, Doreen. So I'm like, sure, you know, because I knew this woman set me up a few times and they were, they didn't go horrible. So I was like, sure. She says, well, Doreen was talking, was here at the office and she was talking to Ed and I and Ed had a lot of nice things to say about you and she realized she had a lot in common with you around the same age same background, so to speak. And both of her, you know, both you guys are in sales. So we thought maybe it'd be a good idea to hook the two of you up. So she wants a picture and she'll give you a picture in return. Is that okay? I said, fine. So the following week I went there, I gave, I gave her, you know, gave my friend Ed's assistant my picture and she gave me a picture of Doreen. I look at the picture. I'm like, whoa, what a fucking knockout. This girl was fucking hot. I mean, hot. Now, I knew the picture was a, was professionally done. You could tell because it's just like all blurry on the edges and then, you know, color and makeup and hair all decked out and and, and the, 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 the definite high definition. It was definitely a professionally done photo or touched up with Photoshop. I don't know what it was. I didn't care. She was hot. I was like, fine. So I give him my picture, and now I'm getting a little self-conscious. I'm like, wow, this girl's out of my league. I hope she'll go out with me. Next time I go there, I meet with Ed for lunch, and his assistant's like, Doreen really likes you. She thinks you're an attractive guy. She wants to meet you, but she doesn't want to give out her number. So is it okay if I give her your number and she calls you? So I'm like, sure, no problem. I understand that. So almost two weeks go by, and I don't get a call from the girl. So I'm figuring... She lost it or, you know, is having dialing issues. You know, she just can't, like, figure out the number. I don't know what the deal is. So I don't get a call. Every time I go out and do exercise, women call me. So I I, I ran six miles. I come back. I'm, like, retired, just out of the shower. The phone rings. It's a block number. I'm just like, oh, gee. I pick up the phone. She's like, hi, is Luxley there? I was like, yeah, this is Luxley. 
It's like, hi, Luxley, my name's Doreen. Now, I have to be very straightforward with you because I was a little anxious about giving my name and my number out. So my real name isn't Doreen. My real name is Andy. And I just have one question for you. Hypothetically, let's say you and I meet and we connect and we really hit it off and the stars align and every I'm like, oh my fucking God, is this possible? Is this real? So she's like, so all I want to know is if we happen to get married, would you be okay raising your kids, our kids, in the Jewish faith and perhaps, just perhaps, converting to Judaism? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I'm not that religious. I have no problem converting to Judaism or, or having children raised Jewish. No problem. So we have this great two-hour conversation, We, you know. We, we're we both into writing. We're both into sales. Uh, my favorite writers are F. Scott Fitzgerald and John Irving. Her favorite writers are F. Scott Fitzgerald and John Irving. Her favorite color is purple. My favorite color is purple. I mean, this is really, really going well. And we were on the phone for two hours, maybe even three hours, and it only seemed like a 15-minute conversation was just flying by. It was awesome. I was like, real, this girl freaking hot. I'm like digging her and she's got a great personality. I mean, I got to convert to Judaism, but what the fuck? So we make plans to go out to this Japanese restaurant and she told me specifically that she didn't want to meet me alone in a restaurant. Usually I just meet women for drinks, but if they're hot, I'll go out, <laughs> go out to dinner. So we meet at this Japanese restaurant, and she told me that she didn't want to meet alone uh, inside the restaurant, that she wanted to meet outside in a parking lot. She told me what kind of car she drove, so I go up to her car. I guess she didn't want to walk in alone. You know, women, whatever. I kind of understood that. So I get there at the restaurant on a Friday night, and it's pouring, pouring rain, and I don't have an umbrella. So... I'm like, oh, gee. You know, I didn't tell her what kind of car I had, and it's pouring rain. I mean, to the point that you can't almost even see across the parking lot. It's really that bad. Cats and dogs raining everywhere. So I go inside, and I'm just like standing by the door looking out for her car. I didn't see her car. I figured, okay, if I see her car, I'll run out, whatever. And I just didn't see her car. So suddenly she comes in <clears throat> out of nowhere, and it looks like, she just got out of a pool. She's soaking wet. And she's like, that strike one. You weren't outside waiting for me. And I'm just like, oh, my God, where's, <laughs> where's Andy? I look at her. And, I mean, all right, yeah, it's raining or whatever. But it looked no she looked nothing like her picture. Nothing at all like her picture. And she was wearing sweats. And sneakers? I, I mean, I mean, how many people, raise your hand if you would show up on a first date with someone you're excited about meeting because you spoke to him for three hours on the fucking phone and you're going to show up in sweats? Or, I mean, it's like going on a job interview. Are you going to show up in sweats? No. So this was a little bit baffling to me. We sit there and she proceeds to wolf down about $30 worth of Japanese food and doesn't even talk to me. Doesn't doesn't say two words it's just so how was your day at work okay do you like the food it's not bad i was just I, you know i i was talking to this woman for three hours on the phone and now all i get is yes or no answer she could have had like two two signs yes no yes no not bad not good whatever and it was just such a nightmare and then after a while i just was just decided to make this a little game. I, you know, I believe the soy sauce would be right in front of me. I was like, sorry, but excuse me, can you pass me the soy sauce? And she'd go, Tch. you know, like, Tch. it's right in front of you. It's like, oh, the, duh. Can you pass me the salt, please? Uh, you know, just, just so she would, like, do something and acknowledge that I was there. It was a terrible, 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 terrible day. But I've had worse. And then she just... I walked, I was like, you know, I was like walking her to her car. She's like, I'm not an imbecile. I know how to get to my car, but you can call me again if you want. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so that was the last time I saw Andy. So about a full year passes. And my friend Teresa, the one who has the cat, Monty, that is famous for all my pictures that I send to women that love cats. She wants to set me up on a blind date. 
it's a friend of hers, and her name is Stephanie. And she shows me a picture of Stephanie, and I was like, yeah, I'll go out with her. She's really, she's incredible. She's really, really hot. And she says, okay, give me one of your pictures, good picture, or we'll take a few pictures, and I'll give them to her. Is that all right? I said, fine, no problem. So it turns out that Stephanie doesn't want my doesn't want to give out her phone number. She doesn't want to give out her phone number. She wants my phone number, which is which I understand. And uh, so a couple of weeks go by. She never calls. Suddenly one day I'm cooking dinner and the phone rings and it's like, "Hey, Luxley." I said, "Yeah, this is Luxley." Hi, this is Stephanie. Oh, hi, Stephanie. How are you? Yeah, I'm um, um, Teresa's friend. Uh, she said that I would be giving you a call. I'm sorry I didn't call sooner. I, I was away on vacation. I said, oh, no problem. No problem. I understand. Where'd you go? She's like, oh, I went to Israel. I said, oh, really? I said, that's interesting. She says, uh, by the way, I, I have to, I feel sad kind of breaking this to you, but my name really isn't Stephanie. My name is Andy. And I just have one question for you. Hypothetically, let's say, and I was just like, oh my fucking God, how did I not recognize her from the picture? So it turns out that the original picture that I saw of Andy was a, was a picture that she had taken after she graduated from college, which means it was about a 10 or 12 year old picture. And that's why she looked very different. In that picture, she was a dirty blonde. In the picture that Teresa had, it was very, very recent, and she was a redhead. And in that picture, when she was a dirty blonde, her skin was was much darker. She probably had a tan and the other. So I didn't put two and two together. A full year passed. I the names were different. Stephanie, Doreen, Andy. She's got multiple names, multiple personalities. So I figured. I don't know. I'm a glutton for punishment. I just figured I'll give it a shot. We made plans uh, to meet for drinks. Now, I'm not sure if she knows that I'm the same guy because I didn't send the same picture, but maybe she did, maybe she didn't. And I'm getting ready to grab my keys that night. We're going to meet out on a Wednesday night for drinks, and I get a phone call. And I answer the phone, and it's a girl crying on the phone. Shut <laughs> girl. I'm like, I can't understand you. What? Are you, who is this? She's <laughs> crying on the phone. She's like, oh, Chris, I'm sorry. This is Andy. This is Andy. I was like, oh, what's the matter? Uh, Andy, what are you crying? Is everything all right? She, no, it's, everything's awful. So she's like, let me call you back in five minutes. I was just like, oh, great. You know, she's going to hang up on me again. So she actually does call me back in about 15 minutes or so, and she's got herself composed, and she's like, Luxley, you're a great guy. I remember you from a couple of years. I just was acting like a total bitch that night. I just had a really bad day. I was having my period, and I got in a big fight with my sister, and I lost some money, and I, the date, I, I – for some reason, I thought we were meeting a lot later than we were, and I just threw myself together, ran outside, and I'm really sorry about that. She's like, I'm not that that much of a bitch or crazy chick. She said, but I also have to be honest with you, my boyfriend, I have a boyfriend, and he's going through some issues. He's gay, or he's not sure if he's gay, or he's bisexual, so basically he'd rather fuck men and be with me, and... I'm just kind of screwed up right now, and I mean, really, he's kind of an ex-boyfriend, so I'm just really not in a good, not really ready to go out on any dates right now. <laughs> I'm like, no problem, no problem, no problem. But yeah, that's a that's a true story. That is a very much a true story about how is set up or hooked up on a blind date with the same girl three times. This is Luxley saying, whatever it is by you, morning, afternoon, or night, make it epic, make it great. Luxley out.